Welcome back to the Beacon Theater. We've got some big guys in the ring. Heavyweights and a four-rounder. Let's get the introductions now from Joe Antonacci. Boxing fans, our next bout is scheduled for four rounds of action in the heavyweight division. Our judges overseeing this heavyweight contest, Matt Ruggiero, Louis Rivera, and Alan Rubenstein. And our referee for this bout, Danny Schiavone. Introducing first in the blue corner, he comes to us tonight from Harlem, New York City. He weighed in at 233 pounds, wears white trunks with black trim. Professional record, one victory, one defeat, one knockout. Please welcome Kenyatta Ravenel. And his opponent fighting out of the red corner. He comes to us tonight from the Bronx in New York City. He weighed in at 257 pounds. Black trunks with red trim. Professional record, one victory, no defeats, one knockout. Please welcome Vaughn, MVP Parnell. Instructions. All right, fellas, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Expect you to obey my commands at all times. Keep the ball clean. Touch them up. Touch them up. Let's go. Good luck. All right, so Ravenel and Vaughn Parham. That's, Matt, you're all that's set, what Matt. he told me his name Matt, was. You all set? <laughs> you all set? That's what it said outside his door, also. <laughs> in the, in the don't blink division, the heavyweights. Ravenel also fights as a mixed martial artist. 1 0 in that uh, category. Well, it used to be that the MMA people were considered freaks in boxing, trying to find the money in boxing. And now there's more room for all. Here's a right hand coming across by Parham. If you're wondering, Parham is 6'6, six six. Ravenel's 5'11. A bit of a discrepancy here. A big advantage here for Parham. Yet, if a guy doesn't use his reach, yep. and you get inside, it's like the reach doesn't exist. You gotta make a pay when you get in there, because you're doing the work to get past the jab. You gotta throw punches when you get in there. Anything, body shots, uppercuts. So Ravenel will have his work cut out. Parham's 29, but he missed three years after he broke his ankle in the Empire State game. Took three years off the heel. And in any of the sport, that might be considered a bad thing, but in a sport of contact where fatigue mounts up on your, the wars mount up on your body, if you haven't been hit in a couple of years and you've been training, it's not the worst thing that can happen. Yeah. He was very calm in his wrestling room. He was just sitting on the floor, very quiet. You saw him in the ring introductions almost in a daze a little bit. Not, not excited. Well, who will be the one to gamble here? Ravenel wants to get inside. He'll have to eat some leather to do it. He took a left hand. Now he should bob and weave, make himself smaller. He should, but he's just he's keeping that head there. And I think. Parham just gets the distance. Let's see if bring the right hand over the top, see what happens. But he's got to snap the jab out just to, just to freeze him, just to hold him in place. Ravenel coming up just a bit short. And there's Parham opening up with a couple. Good left hook by Parham. Now right there. That's where, see Ravenel had the advantage. He should have worked the body. And he just, he didn't, he didn't do anything again. Like you said, half the work, you're getting hit. You might as well get in there and start throwing punches. There's the uppercut by Parham, and we will look for that against the smaller fighter. That should be a prime weapon for him. Because he's looking for those straight shots, and you're coming from underneath, never sees it. Ravenel's kind of leaning, leading with his head anyway, so he can walk into that uppercut. So Ravenel swarms, and he was aggressive. But Parham got some good shots in. Time. You're waiting a little too long in between.
good punches, and when you hurt him with a shot, you look at him I'm and let him get away, okay? I need you to start doing more combinations when you're inside, okay? Do me a favor. You're throwing the hook, and it's landing all the time. You're throwing the hook, and then you're stepping back and looking at him. Step in. Double hook to the head. Throw some shots at him. Okay, baby? Okay, you're in great shape. More, more, more. I got you. You're in great shape. Let's do this, baby, okay? Don't look tired. You look slow. You look sluggish. Like you're sparring. Yeah, I need you to pick up the punch. Make sure you get that water up. Make sure you get that water up. A lot of water. I need you to get You're not hooking with that. You're not hooking with that. Breathe, breathe. Breathe. Okay? All right, seconds out. Seconds out. Let's go. Get that water, please. Get that water. All right, get out. That's we it. start round two, Box. scheduled for four in the heavyweight division. Kenyatta Ravenel in the white trunks trying to swarm Vaughn Parham. It's a small ring with big guys, so it should set up for fireworks, and we're getting set. Finally, there you go. You got Ravenel doing what he has to. He's bobbing and weaving, coming in, getting inside, working the body, tattooing the ribs, going up to the head, staying outside like that. That plays in the Parham's game. One, two, one, two, left hook. There you see, set him up from Step the outside. Good thing about four round fights. No room to take any time off. The guys have to bring everything. Each round is critical. And so, you have to step on the gas. And if I'm Parham, you go into the head and you don't see anything, you're not wobbling him, good shot to the belly might not be a bad idea. There's a little edge for Parham, is that he can punch backing up and still score. The intangible benefit of reach. However, he backs straight out of an exchange and he doesn't want to do that. No. And it seems like he backs up, stops, surveys what's going on, then decides to come forward. If Parham knew it, he put it together like that, just keep throwing punches. And there's the body shot I talked about. Just work him over. You got the height advantage, and as you always say, if you don't use it, what's the point? Drives trainers crazy. <laughs> and here's a guy using it now. And you see the advantage of it. it Befuddles Ravenel. Here's a guy on the outside who's strong, has a reach, you can't get in. Every time you try to do something, he makes you pay. And the funny thing, Dave, he started the round bobbing and weaving, putting pressure on Parham, then all of a sudden he stopped. And that let Parham in the fight, or into the round. It shows you why these guys are at this stage of their career. Ravenel 1-1, one and one, Parham 1-0. One and, oh. and in fighters just coming out of the blocks, you'll see that. You'll see a burst for maybe a minute, and their growing period will mean that they'll be able to do it for three minutes later on in their career. As you said, in the four round, you didn't have no time to take off. you got to go full bore. Ravenel's just, look at him, just waiting, waiting. You're giving Parham a chance to fire first. And then you're not even countering when he doesn't snap that left jab back. See, right there, he had a chance to throw a one-two, didn't do anything. See, he's so busy covering up, he's not firing back. Now Ravenel tries to counter back. But Parham is cutting off the ring. And he's got this fight territorially where he wants it. And that was an awfully good body shot. So we come to the end of round two, and Parham doing a nice job on the outside against Ravenel. Time! Starting up, and you're warming up. I need that same volume of punches in this round. Okay, I need the same volume of punches in this round. Third Use round coming hook. up. Third round coming. Okay, I need this hook. I need this hook, okay? Control that hook with meaning and tension. It's right in front of you, baby. Put some pop on your punches. Don't load up. Just double jab, double jab, shoot the right yeah, hand, and shoot the yeah. hook hard. Okay? This guy's done. He's gonna come at you like a bullet this round, then he's gonna die down. He don't got much left, Vaughn. Well, you're warming up, and he's dying out. But I need you to keep it high bottom of punches. Yeah, take a look at uh, Kenyatta, I mean, uh, Vaughn Parham, who's, who's a very good fighter from the outside. He's, he establishes his range, just taps him, make those combinations. He has his man backing up, and when he stuck his out, head, I think out. that's when he said, oh, it didn't hurt, huh? Let me show you what it really feels like. There's a lot of combinations, which you don't see in a big man that often, Dave. Yeah, a little bit of speed to go with everything, so that's a refreshing credential for him. As we start round three, scheduled for four, 
Vaughn Parham Watch your head. in the black trunks. Watch He's 1-0 and oh from the Bronx. Kenyatta Ravenel from Harlem. He's 1-1. One one. Ravenel told me he does switch up. And there you see him fighting as a softball. Giving an honest effort, too. And he might pay whatever the price in his next fight just to get a guy his own size. He got hurt right there with a straight right hand. He did. He walked in, and here's Parham with a nice uppercut underneath. And then he works the body. And the big man starting to use the big tools. Parham needs to step back. Ravenel wouldn't let him. You figure he just got hurt as a sophomore. Maybe he should go back to fighting orthodox. Yeah, and he's out of breath as well. Ravenel has hit a stamina wall, and Parham is slamming him. And he's on the wrong side of the style. And Parham's punches are backing him up. It's a straight jab. You get your distance, shoot the jab, you back up Ravenel. Just like that. And you know, this is energizing Parham to see Ravenel losing some steam and slowing down a little bit. When one guy slows down, the other guy may naturally heat up, seeking some momentum. The man slowing down, I'd like to see him go to the body. Nice left hook. He hurt him with that. There's the body shot. Ravenel is tired and stop, taking stop, some flush stop. shots. Don't do that. Don't do that. Let's go. Keep he it got clean, a warning, fellas. but he bought a few seconds. Can you do that mixed martial arts? <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> you see that little flashback there. You can watch. Ravenel is trying to, he's not even punching back right now. I mean, Parham is, is, he's smothered, but he's still doing well. Look at that, just throwing punches. Craig, step back. And he smothered himself with yeah, that combination, yeah. but you know what? He's working on something they told him in the gym. Find an opening right. and throw a lot of punches at a guy. Now, you do that enough times, you'll learn to step back right. in future fights, but you're seeing a little glimpse Take of a guy growing. You reestablish your distance so you get all the leverage behind your punches instead of smothering yourself. And Ravenel, on the other hand, he's got him where he wants him, but he's got no steam. He's got no, got no energy to throw anything. You can see right now he's just trying to survive, and he got tattooed right there. It's a small ring, but for Ravenel, it is way too big <laughs> at this point. And he's getting nailed. The referee will take a close look. Taking into account how tired Ravenel is. And this bell... He doesn't want to continue. He's looking at the referee. Will not sound a minute too soon for him. A long and unproductive third round for Kenyatta Ravenel. Breathing very heavy. Kenny, you all right, Kenny? They've got a decision to make in there. You want to continue? Kenny, you done? That's it? Yeah? And it's a good decision. Yeah. That's it. I had a, the way he looked at the referee, we've seen it a thousand times. He knows he's outclassed. He doesn't want to continue. And that's, if you don't want to be in there, don't be in there. Especially when the gas tank has yeah. run out. That is when you are a candidate for serious cool. injury. Yeah. So they see that in the corner. The inspectors are in there to make sure that the corner's not making the fighter do anything the fighter doesn't the want. It's boxing's version of checks and balances. And it gives you an idea when you know something's wrong. We're talking about the gas tank being empty. When you throw a jab and it backs you off like two or three steps, you just have nothing left at that point. This is not an easy sport. No, not at all. It will and take a lot out of you. Even if you think you're in shape, you get into a ring and you find out that maybe you're not in the shape you thought you were. Yeah. There's no such thing as doing too many push-ups. In this sport. Good job, guys. Good job. Early in the round, he watched the right hand by Parham right down the middle. There he is. He's kind of staggered a little bit on his feet. He's covering up. Parham just goes to work. Every punch he lands, Dave just kind of backs him up. And there he is. You saw him look at the referee. I, I caught his eyes, and you can see him. He's getting hit. He's holding on. Let's see if we can watch him. Gives the referee that. Like, hey, where's the standing eight? Well, right. They don't have it. Come on, ref. Mixed martial arts, I'd be sitting down by now. <laughs> but it's just, he's out of gas. He had no answer. Yeah, you know what? You see the heavy breathing there at the end. When it goes, it goes on you. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be back. And every once in a while, a good body shot, when you're not in shape, puts even more out of shape. 
That's a tough place to be when things are not going your way. And Parham got better as the fight went along. And this will be a nice confidence boosting victory for him because of the manner that he had. Well, we're ready for the final numbers and let's get them now. Towards here. Boxing fans, at the end of the third round, your referee, Danny Schiavone, stops the contest. Your winner by technical knockout from the Bronx in New York City, Vaughn, MVP Parnell. Well, Vaughn Parham comes up with the victory. He goes to 2-0. He has two knockouts. And this one was a good way to get it. He got better as the fight went along. And then he made the corner of Kenyatta Ravenel end this. He applied the pressure. And this fighter from the Bronx, New York, keeps himself perfect. And we'll be back to show you more 